Hi, everyone. Welcome to Culturally Responsive Measurement of Protective Factors with Community Design Programs. My name is Araceli Ligenio, and I'm a project manager at the Capacity Collective, a small group of capacity builders working with nonprofits in the Seattle area. Hi, everyone. My name is Pavel Tenini, and I'm a Healthline Intake Specialist at Famous in DePaul. And last year, I was a member of our Resilient Families um, Advisory Council. Hi everyone, my name is Ann McNair and I'm an evaluator for the Best Arts for Kids initiative at King County, Washington. I'll start us off with some background information about the project. Best Arts decided to fund this project based on feedback from community partners who provide home and community-based services. These partners told us there's a lack of culturally relevant measurement tools for discussing program outcomes with families. Best Start supports this project because it aligns with our values of racial equity and supporting culturally and linguistically specific programming. It's also an example of both being responsive to community partners and focusing on achieving the desired results from our theory of change. From Best Start's perspective, culturally responsive measurement is key to expanding the portfolio of evidence-based programming so that it includes programs that are developed by and for BIPOC linguistically diverse communities. By investing in this tool here locally, it can help build evidence for community design programming and nationally demonstrate the value of culturally responsive evaluation. Aristelli will now share some more details about the project. Thank you, Anne. So in 2021, the Capacity Collective began the project to develop a culturally relevant multilingual tool for measuring protective factors for families with children under the age of five in King County a county with over 2 million people and 22% of residents who were born outside of the United States. The foundational protective factors were those identified by the Center for the Study of Social Policies Strengthening Families Framework, and the Protective Factors Survey 2 was selected for adaptation from the Friends National Resource Center for Community-Based Child Abuse Prevention. To adapt the survey, the community-driven process included a 15-member BIPOC Resilient Families Advisory Council, two literature reviews, interviews with experts, translating the survey into six languages, and testing the survey with 36 families. The final adapted 20-item tool was named the Protective Factors King County Survey to honor the King County families for whom it was developed. Now, Sabal will share about her experience on the council. Yeah, thank you, Rasali. Diverse perspectives in the council allowed for rich dialogue for relevant early learning topics provided a space of learning to build off ideas and inspired creativity to better serve families. That's in the survey shows the need for more family education about early learning programs and instructions, the impact of family culture, cultural norms, and language to access services, and the effect of the interaction between the home visitors and families on young learners. By testing the translated version, I did the Arabic one, we learned that language is only the beginning uh, of adapting survey for immigrant and refugee populations. Families need more support to learn about relevant program offerings in their primary language, and trust building and program orientation are essential before administering surveys. Benefits of the project for IFAC members and the communities they serve were opportunities for active listening and learning from other practitioners in similar roles. The educational experience of learning about other cultures from one's own and professional development about culturally responsive survey adaptation. Now I'll, I'll pass it back to Rizali for some results and next steps. Thanks, Sarah. Some of the survey protective factor adaptations were a shift from family resilience to self-efficacy and systems navigation, nurturing and attachment items shifted to knowledge of parenting and child development, while concrete supports, social supports, and parent and caregiver program staff relationship only needed minor language updates to survey items. Next steps include conducting broader testing, determining validity using academic and culturally responsive methods, and translating into other languages. We've learned that the model of the Resilient Families Advisory Council has been successful in supporting shared decision making. Developing a tool like this in a short time frame is challenging, and ideally there would be more time and resources before moving into implementation. Still, we are forging ahead. There is strong community support for both the approach and the content of the tool, and the enthusiasm will continue to be nurtured. 
please come to our poster presentation session for more information. We look forward to seeing you virtually on March 23rd. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. Bye.